Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, how much money have you given the Steam machine? There's an easy way to find out. It's kind of embarrassing. I'll show you mine. And the latest League of Legends update broke that wine compatibility, but a fix could be incoming. And just a note... We're testing some new hardware tonight, so there might be some bumpy along the way. So, ta-da. Valve is eyeing your bones and is very, very concerned where your fingers are going. And we all have a devil on our shoulder, and now there's a devil on the other one. Now you can follow your favorite shovelware developer, and Valve is glad to help. And Base Mark brings the bench, but you can't sit on it. Not with that attitude. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I've been Stone here at LGC Actual here in Athens, piloting the starship. Oh my god, it's on fire. Joined every week by our man up north, our tame Canadian podcaster, one Jordan Svang. Hello. And the man, not well, he, he hails from Space Portugal, but currently on the Isle of Britannia. That is Pedro Mateus. Hello. That is horrifying because together with you at home, helping us. Form. Cocaine Voltron. That's right. That chat realm dynamic. It's brilliant. Lads, what's been going on this week? Since you guys never fill that part out, I'm just gonna start skipping you from now on. I Fast mean that's 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 fine. I don't I don't I don't do much. I, I enter like a cryogenic tube and then on, on Saturday I exit it and do a podcast and go back in. Stasis now, maybe. It's Canada. Yeah, just go outside. Basically yeah, for it, me it, it's just been uh listening to rich people talk about how they're getting a vacation place in Portugal, and I'm like, why? See, <laughs> why would you I, do that? I, I, I don't know. I, I talked about this a little in the pre-pre Super Shows, and I started playing the uh, new Zelda game on the Switch, because I need to get some use out of that console. And uh, it's pretty fun so far, actually. I'm going to hmm. give it a recommend if you have a Switch. And you haven't played it in, like, the year that it's been out already. It's kind of a thing. Uh, over here, we are now on PeerTube. I think. I'm not sure about that. There'll, there'll be a link somewhere. Someone will post are, it. Are we also on PTube? <laughs> Next week. Uh, to stay, no. <laughs> and uh, kind of did some back-end stuff. Added a sitemap to our web zone, so Google will stufu and leave me alone. So that's done. And there's now a dedicated podcast landing page. If you're looking for the RSS audio feed goodness for this show and weekly, daily Wednesdays, uh, just tap that podcast button. It'll take you right to it. It's a bit brilliant. Um... Let's tap the horse again this week <laughs> with, with, with our P tube. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I can't, I can't go anywhere with that. That won't get us censored off YouTube. It's the steam. Whoops. Nailed it. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, all right. So okay. this this latest Steam update: three chairs, two chairs, one chair. How's what's going on? Listen, man. it's uh, it's definitely going to be worth some chairs at some point because it's the new developer and publisher following page thingy update of the week, and Valve in their, you know, continuous quest to automate everything have decided to let you curate your own store, even though they're technically liable for dealing with certain kinds of people, but whatever. Uh, they'll only do something if someone is kicking up a stink, and if you can do it yourself, or they can automate it, then they're just not going to bother. And this is just more of that. And it's basically, if you read through it, it's confirmation bias, the update, because it does fuck all to uh, improve discoverability of that one really good indie title that showed up on steam but no one can see because it's buried within all the shovelware but if you found that one indie developer that you really like their games now you can follow them and keep up to date so i guess that's good ish uh, yeah this is definitely a thing this is a uh, valve doing something of questionable use and way too yeah. late to really be like all right th thanks for doing that did you guys notice this though it's kind of an aside is uh you know, now that we have the developer thing, it's easy. You know, Pedro, you bring up the shovelware shit. I've noticed since they've cracked down on uh, just handing out achievements and cards on my morning check when I do the uh, games, a lot less of that lately. Yeah. <laughs> and there's I, also I, been a lot less Linux games as a result of that. Game. There, there, there's there's also a sale game. going on too, yes. which will which will impact <laughs> store listings. I don't know. To me, to me, this sounds like something like Valve is doing, sort of 
placate the larger publishers. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, we're we're, we're going to make sure that you still get like the 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 I I I eyeballs that um you're you're paying us to get. So don't don't go elsewhere. Don't start putting your games on Origin or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's I, mean, it's, uh, I don't know. It, it, it uh uh let's see who was it in chat world that brought up the uh the Volver digital update thingy it's yeah if you go and specifically follow those publishers or developers that have been good with the linuxes yeah you're going to get some news whenever they put out new games but say there's a new one how are you going to find out about that unless you go look at the new releases list like everyone else has to do nowadays it's questionable use, as Ven put it. So back in my day, we had to subscribe yeah. to magazines and listen <laughs> and, and, and read about it and go go watch G4 Tech TV. Here's right, the right, thing, right, right. man. Uh, moving on to our next story, uh, you can find out exactly how much money that you've given Steam directly with a new thing. I'll go ahead and drop that in chat right there. Uh, this one is kind of horrifying. <laughs> because it tells you how much money you've given Steam. It doesn't count like redeemed keys and humble purchases. Yep. So it, it, I, honestly, I don't think this is too bad for like, coming up on six years, two thousand three hundred and fifty six dollars and forty pence. I can. I'm a bit it. higher than that. I'm at uh, two thousand nine hundred and thirty seven pounds. Mm. <laughs> I didn't check because I don't want to see this number and, and get depressed. <laughs> uh, I, I I had to give it a look because I was curious because I've never bought outside of a uh, Trackmania and Scrim Skyrim. Well, you you got the box copy of Skyrim too, so I did. But yeah, all right, I didn't. That doesn't count on Steam though. Yeah, because yeah, well, no, it, it gives you like a Steam key to like. Well, like no, the, 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 here's the first up that date they made to Skyrim was to tie it permanently to Steam so you couldn't play it standalone. And that's going to be relevant come uh, time for the hate mail. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Spoilers! So, uh, yeah, everyone uh, go look at the horror of how much uh, money you have dropped into (laughs) Steam, but horror. Spooky skeletons? No bones about that. All right, Steam VR has the skeletal input. So, um, they're fancy schmancy new sensors in a lot of the uh, controllers, or even in the current controllers can do enough that they can infer skeletal position and finger position based on the various inputs that it's getting. Which basically, uh, which basically Valve is now saying, you can leverage this to, um, to essentially have a bunch of canned hand animations that we can provide via Steam input so that you can have like a bet, you can have better verisimilitude when it comes to VR experience. And at the moment, it just supports the HTC Vive wand, the Oculus Touch controllers, and the Sonic and Knuckles uh, EV2 with Knuckles on the second. Which Genesis. we'll talk about in a second. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, and and that's basically it. It's a more effective jack off motion for your <laughs> VR games. And this is another step in Valve trying to provide good tooling for VR devs so that they don't have to fuck around with a lot of the minutia of well we need to translate finger animations and we need to make sure that like uh controllers work and so on um valve is really trying to like encourage developers and hardware manufacturers to uh embrace vr by essentially providing or by making the barrier for entry a lot lower by doing a lot of the work for yep. them they're re- they're really doubling down on this um and yeah like i said before uh one one of the main uh, edges of vr is the verisimilitude and this can theoretically help improve the lie a little bit just because this will give you some better resolution when it comes to gripping Hmm. one of the things i like about this is uh valve is putting the onus on the hardware manufacturers to add support for the skeletal input system to the Mm -hmm. new controllers and it's not up to the app developers so we might be able to see this i mean it's a damn shame vr's fallen hard on its face organ but yeah because there hasn't been a proper game released for it in i don't know uh when did serious sam vr come out yeah about that long yeah well and and and, and that's the other thing too steam is very clearly playing the long game by like trying to create the tooling and by by like who's who's to say that this will not come to fruition 
in like five, six years. It could I'm, very I'm, well do. Yeah. And Valve, for all their, you know, for all their, all, all their flaws, wow, my English is escaping me. Uh, they have put up the sauce for the open VR uh, it, improvements for the skeletal skeletal. skeletal. Yes. So, yeah, it, 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 it twists your spine and uh, makes you run uh, yeah, like Usain it's all, Bolt. It's all on GitHub. Whatever your opinion of Microsoft is, they still haven't fucked GitHub up. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's mm-hmm. go into the EV2 and what's yeah, new. Sp- sp- speaking of the Knuckles, so this one took a little bit of research because like, I wasn't necessarily sure what they were talking about. So you remember we talked about this last year. There were... um. A pro- there was a prototype second revision of the Steam mm-hmm. VR controller that clipped on your hand and read your finger movements and allowed you to grip things. This is the um, this is the latest hardware revision of it. The uh, Knuckles Evolve Two will not let you fly around and collect rings, which is really the <laughs> unfortunate thing here. Um, but uh, the new re- the uh, new revision has a uh, USB C charging, um, improved uh, support for skeletal support. Um, they've uh, redone a bit of the ergonomics so that it's a little easier to hold and they've been shipping these out to uh, developers mainly this isn't going to be something that you can go pick up and fuck around with um this is very still very much still in the we're trying to come we're trying to figure out this vr controller mess and make it intuitive and make it good so that you know when that when that far future date comes on on the valve calendar which i'm pretty sure the, the Valve, like, Kanban board or whatever is one of those Mayan calendars. It has to be at this <laughs> point. Um, but, uh, yeah. They, uh, th- this, this is the latest in the uh, ongoing development of the Steam VR input controller. Uh, things seem to work. It all works with the uh, Steam input uh, stuff. And it will come out eventually. If you're a developer, uh, they give you some instructions on how to develop port, how to request units, and so on and so forth. And yeah, they are waiting for feedback because this is probably not going to be the last revision of the Knuckles. All right. Uh, well, it's uh, it's a controller I'll never be able to use because, you know, can't. I just fucking can't. Because you keep trying to eat controllers, man. I told you, man. <laughs> they're, they're not for consumption. Listen to me <laughs> one day. The, the only thing I thought about this when I was looking at this is like, oh, man, with the skeletal thing. All right. I wonder what the first thing to be squeezed is going to be. Hashtag mm. improved jerk off motion. <laughs> Basically. 64 bit Steam API supports thing. We're going to talk about it for reasons. Oh, yes. Uh, so it's uh, it's Steam Forwarder. Uh, if you're wondering what the hell is a Steam Forwarder. Well, it's sort of kind of like Steam Bridge, but it's for the new stuff. Basically, all of those games that have been coming out on Steam for Windows that are 64-bit only, now you can use your native Steam client to launch them. Uh, you can use it to download them, launch them, all from the native client. Sort of, kind of, because you still have to use the command line to call Steam Forwarder and tell it to download the game, a Windows-only game, and it will use whichever version of Wine you have installed on your system. That is all well and good until you read into the bit that it intercepts the Steam API.dll calls. And that may very well get you fact banned if you're not careful. So if you really want to play that uh, Windows game that you left behind because you moved to Linux, you can, but you may have to deal with Valve support and explain to them exactly what you're doing. If you're happy with that, then more power to you, I guess. So, so really, the the goal here is that you don't have to run two Steams. You don't have to run the Wine Steam and the yep. Linux Native Steam. You can just or just listen, just run two Steams, okay? Or, <laughs> yeah, or, again, it's, do, it's do, do it do it through Lutris. <laughs> it's it's never lupus. Yeah, it's always it, lupus, man. It's uh, Valve actually recognizes when you're running uh, Steam through Wine, and it keeps track of that. And the good thing about it is that you don't get vac banned because you're running a game through Wine. Oh, we'll, we'll know, talk about that Blizzard. a little bit later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's this is a really good idea. I've wanted something like this for a while, but I wanted it to be recognized by Valve and not get me banned the moment I fired up. Mm. Okay. Let's get fired up about Discord. Um, this is from Eurogamer. All this business in our show notes. Uh, Discord has launched a 
and games tab, you might have noticed it. And it's basically Steam. That's a bit of a stretch. Pedro, what is it showing you now in the games tab? Just what's going on, what people are playing? I mean, that's not a big deal, right? It, it isn't uh, a big deal right now. Well, it, it, it's showing me that Linux Nuru has played some Minecraft and that yeah. Popey, Popey is posting about Ballistic Overkill and <laughs> I, 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 I don't fucking know. Osiris is playing Overwatch because, of course, he is. No, he's playing mm-hmm. Borderlands. Well, um, here's the thing, man. Uh, we were talking about this, I think, last week when just like Steam did the group chats. And it was like, oh, yeah. boy, yeah, Discord kind of beat you to that, Steam. And that is like pale second place with his group chats. And I think Discord just kind of fired some shots across the power like, yo, um, we we can do this stuff, too. Because mm-hmm. the more I think about this, it, the more possible this bullshit, crazy ass idea could come to fruition. I mean, it makes me wonder if Steam knew this was like in the works, and that's why they're like, "Look, guys, group group chats like five years too late, and it's all organized and shit like that." Um, because there's a market right now for how Steam used to be, old yeah. Steam. Remember that one, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the w- the one where a game was more likely to get rejected because it was shit versus the current all welcome policy that we have today of shovelware and shit where Steam lets so much shit in, it has to implement things to like stop it, man. It's mm-hmm. fucked up. And if Discord has the capacity for video chat and all the bullshit that they're doing, they sure as fuck all are going to be able to distribute games if they put their mind to it. I mean, so, so, yeah, so, yeah. Cause I think in all seriousness, man, steam needs to fucking look out by the time the SS Valtanic gets turned around. It's like, Whoa, wait, what happened? Because if, <laughs> all right, tell me this. I genuinely believe if discord whips out like their game distribution salami, poof, steam very well could end up with a salami concussion, man. So I think, I, I, I don't know, to, to me, it seems like um, Discord trying to compete directly with Valve, at, at least the sort of like a games marketplace doesn't mm-hmm. seem likely. What I do see, what I do see happening, though, is one of the big advantages of like playing multiplayer games on Steam is like the whole right click join thing. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if so, if Discord can implement some sort of like hook for like facilitating uh for facilitating multiplayer games sort of like OG Game Spy back in the day mm-hmm. uh, that, uh, yeah that, that, who's, uh, uh all seeing eye that some, gave you some, a list of all the servers that you could just double click and you'd launch the game and join that yeah, server i i think that that would that would take a bigger bite out of the valve sandwich than just a game launcher cuz then you cuz that's the other thing you have to negotiate like distribution rights and um patch patching services and incremental updates uh do, doing doing something where it's just like we're we're going to leverage the fact that we're sort of a community management service and enable people to get into games with each other faster i think mm-hmm. that's probably that's probably something more up discord's alley but that's that's just me spitballing and you know spinning no, i completely whatever. agree but i think rolling out their own we're not talking I'm, I'm saying way down the, i could mm. see this being logical progression at one point and when it comes to like who could ever take on steam once that idea got in my brain meets it's like that could fucking happen yeah because discord has been growing and if you follow discord on twitter they are massive right now so yeah it's uh it or, could or, very well happen or or waiting for amazon to buy them out mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> all right uh let's get into game updates yes 100,000 so we've we've been joking about this we talked about this a bit on the uh, thursday stream actually the new series this is based on a tweet from kirk mckean uh, apparently, the new Serious Sam has a thousand or a hundred thousand enemies on screen at a given time. Now, this does not surprise me because one of the one of the original goals of like the OG Serious Sam engine, the Serious engine, was to support a stupid number of baddies on screen doing stuff at once, and it was designed to be very very efficient at doing that. So with Vulcan with Crow team having 20 odd years of development on top of this, this a hundred thousand enemies at once definitely seems within the realm of possibilities of things that they can do. 
But I just want to say, ladies and gentlemen, that we have entered the fuck plateau. And I'm actually really looking forward to this game now because <laughs> shit's going to get weird. Yeah, 100,000. That's that's a lot. Uh, to the point where even in the article, they mentioned that YouTube video that went viral for a while, which was one of the total war games that had uh 999,990 pe- peasants against uh like 10 uh Greek Spartans. Hello Kitty on Adventure. One of the total war ones. Yes, ah, it could be Total right. War uh Hello Kitty. Uh, <laughs> that's Total War Hammer 2. <laughs> but yeah, Greasy that engine Don't would do give it. them ideas, the motherfucker. Would tank. But the thing is, well, it's it's Crow Team and I am really really looking forward to seeing what Vulcan does to a game engine when you're building it or improving on what you already have with it in mind. It's Very. going to be interesting to see because Sirius M3 was kind of going off in the wrong direction. They were kind of caught up mm-hmm. in the Call of Dude Bros type stuff and it kind of it had some of that, that time. Too many yeah. desert levels. Mm-hmm. Seeing them go back to just bullshit insanity like Sirius M1, Sirius M2, because you could have considered, man, we were like AMD Athlons and Pentium 3s back then, built from the ground up with Vulcan in mind, the type of insanity Crow Team could bring to us. And I, for yeah. one, am looking forward to that. Uh, much like this next game, because I, I don't like Hipster Pixel, but I do like Metrovania, and this kind of looks like it's done right. And I'm with you on that one, Ven, because this is Dead Cells. I've been looking forward to this game ever since I saw the first reviews uh, that showed up when the game first came out on Windows only. And now it's available for Mac and Linux in the beta branch. Uh, It's not an official release just yet. If you have the game and you're a filthy dual booting heathen, by all means, let us know how it works on Linux. And uh, don't just say it's fine. Actually give us some... Uh, think of the share rating, but let us know how it goes, because I want this game. I want this game very much, and it uh, it seems to inherit a lot of the Rogue Legacy uh, elements, because it's randomly generated levels, and you die, and you gotta start from the beginning and do it all over again. And it's a 2D platformer type of deal with pixel graphics, so yeah, it's Rogue Legacy by Wait the other minute. day. No, no, on the video it just said permanent upgrades. Yes, yeah, so you can R- buy R- Rogue thing. Legacy. Rogue, Rogue Legacy like- had a thing too, where like, um, as you sort of collect coins, you can use them to get permanent upgrades and like get better heroes, so that mm-hmm. so that like you're n- that, that 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 is one of the traps that a lot of roguelikes sort of fall into, is that you have to you have to give some sense of progression, or else you're just doing the net hack thing of hammering against the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah. If you <laughs> reward exploration and you award experimentation so that people are engaging with all the various systems in the game, you tend to have people invest a lot longer. Hmm. It looks neat, and it's currently on sale for eleven ninety nine. So you have until what, July fifth to pick that business yep. up. Yeah, um, although keep in mind it is still very much in early access. So yeah. <laughs> hey man. <laughs> So is everything else. Hashtag distance. To be, yeah, to be uh, fair. Uh, hashtag and technically Rocket League still in beta? Question mark. One th- mm-hmm. Yeah, one thing that is still, as far as we know, officially in beta is Rocket League. And they have the Rocket Pass. They are taking a closer look at it because some people raised some concerns with the Rocket Pass when they... Pedro, don't you know, right, it's pay to win, bro. Yeah. It's Rocket League. I mean, unless you're really, really anal about the... Um, hit boxes on the cars no one cares but yeah yeah some people raised well some a lot of people actually kicked up a fuss about the whole rocket pass thing that they made uh the, the announcement about a couple of weeks ago and well they decided to explain it and basically their goal is to have like a seasoned thing uh, similar to what counter-strike uh, global offensive and dota and many other multiplayer games already do where you get a uh, certain specific content mostly aesthetic and for rocket league they're actually saying that it's all going to be aesthetic stuff it's just uh, you can get some vinyls for your car and some antennas and some uh, hats and some trails some goal effects something I, I like that i don't that. know if, if, if i was playing vinyl in like a rocket league car i'd be really really worried <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, all the cackling and popping. But yeah, it's mostly going to be uh, vis- uh, visual... Cack- cackling and stuff. popping. I think you've been listening to that Chicago record oh, for man, a long time. I don't have set up anymore. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Fail. Next week. Why, is, ladies um, and gentlemen. Listen, I'm going to say this. This seems like it's 100% totes fucking cosmetics. And mm-hmm. for people like me who give zero fucks about the cosmetic stuff, it doesn't matter. And for the people that it does, this pisses them off somehow. I don't know. It's You yeah. can earn everything by just playing the game if you get the free pass. Uh, you only have to pay if you just want to have everything without having to grind for it. You mm-hmm. can pay them the ten bucks for the pass, which you know, ten bucks every couple of months. That's probably fine. Even though I am fully aware that yes, I've gotten my expectations lowered to the point where yeah, paying ten bucks every couple of months for a game for just aesthetic stuff is acceptable nowadays. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, Anamonopia Gates of Huge Memories. Two to four months. It's the yes. thing. We talked about it a while back. Uh, that's Anamia. Is it Anima? Anima? An- an- anima. An- anima. 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 Gates of Memories. All right. Um, <laughs> Linux version. Because they have some DLC they were talking about releasing. And I really like the first one. I mean, it, it, it was missing some stuff. All right. It, it needed some work but i mean these lots showed us that they know how to art you got to give mm-hmm. them that i mean this this had a really good this was like one of those almost just there if they could just sort out and tighten up the um combat system combat. on this yeah. but they do say it's windows only right now uh two to four months pedro yeah the developer actually replied to the question that uh pato on the um uh, Steam discussions had it's like, yo, can we get a Linux version of this? You released the original game on Linux, and the developer said, yeah, uh, it takes us a lot of time to do a good conversion slash port, so we will edit in a near future. Mm-hmm. If all goes well, two to three months. So uh, two to four months, sorry. So yeah, two to four months is what we're looking at. <laughs> yeah, this was definitely one of those games. We, we get a lot of keys in, and sometimes I was just like, all right, let's just fire this up, see what this junk looks like. And I remember just seeing the title screen. I was like, holy fuck me. All right, this, this is mm-hmm. like a game. All right. Yeah, yep. it's, like a, it's like a Devil May Cry RPG type thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, which, which we have like none on aside from this game on Linux. Which yeah, is it, this is the one that we got on Linux. <laughs> um, looking forward to it. Definitely mm-hmm. looking forward to it. Uh, what it's we it's uh, Unity too, so yeah. Hopefully, we mm-hmm. don't have to wait all that long. But it's Unity four. So, do we have any new games this week, baby? Uh, we we got we got we got two. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm gonna make a log jamming joke. <laughs> Roll down. It's gonna be bad. Now, log, log log jammers. It is a um. It's basically pong with throwing axes. <laughs> It reminds, it reminds me of that one comedy uh, comedian's routine where it's like, man, lawn darts. You remember those? So you're, uh, yeah, you're, you're trying to, you're trying to throw axes at uh, the opponent and cut their heads off. And if you do, you win. You get a point. Um, but hey, here, here, here's, here's the main thing why this game is so noteworthy. You scroll down. You scroll down to like the game features. What? what's it's multiplayer on online multiplayer. What is this mm-hmm. hot blasphemy, ladies and gentlemen? Why do you think a multiplayer party game should at all be able to connect to the internet to other people to play this game? That is just total, <laughs> total nonsense. No one would ever want that in their right mind. Why are you wasting your time doing that when you can focus on improving the dude, Linux port, dude, you dude, guys? Dude, dude, check out the graphics requirements on Brad and NVIDIA yeah. Quadro K2000. <laughs> you know, they had that lying somewhere and then decided to test it and said no yeah, no that's good. no that, that that is i i i bet you dollars to donuts that's literally the gpu the art guy had in his uh in his computer. <laughs> that that is like who the fuck has a quadro just they go oh, art person old. yes <laughs> i don't know i mean it it looks like that at least the sense of humor is going to be right up there with us and it's going to be in mm-hmm. july i'm maybe looking forward to it yeah it's uh it, it's another one of those. It's it will be available in July, much like this next game, uh, which has been coming soon for the past year. It's Soul Saga, and yep. it, uh, yeah, I, I I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're a little colorblind there, Pedro. <laughs> a little uh, bit. 
<laughs> a little, a little, a little bit, a little drunk. Yeah. Uh, so this, this is supposedly this uh, this guy, Disaster Cake, his love letter to the PlayStation One, PlayStation Two era, uh, era JRPGs that he was so fond of. Um, it's all. It's like Pedro said. It's coming spoon. Wow. There, the, the there's, main there's, video there's, there's, was uh, some dude like playing it down in the corner. Yeah, <laughs> that is. I mean, that that's the thing. We don't really have a lot of JRPG style games on Linux, so. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it 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 it's it's one of those things where it could be good. There's like some weird Pikachu ass looking motherfucker that follows <laughs> you around. Apparently, it's creepy. I don't know. I don't like it. Makes me want to make my scissor hit it with bullet punch a bunch until it dies. Honestly, I've had this game on my wish list for over a year because that's how long it's been coming out soon, and it has it claims it will have a Linux version. So. Come on, guys. Well, uh, here, here's the thing. It clearly looks like it's been developed in Unity because I recognize those trees. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so very, very, very clearly a Linux version is within the realm of possibility. Not looking forward uh, to it. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. I, I mean, this, this is this is one of those games where I know it's totally not a Ben's Alley. So exactly. when it releases, this is one of those games I look at and I'm like, yeah, they're, they're going to send us keys without asking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to fucking play this thing. I know. What oh, I can feel oh, it. oh, yes. Mm. This, this, this is all the revenge for like all the fucking um, like the four racing like, games you've had to play in six years. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. As, as, as opposed to the four <laughs> RPGs we've had to play in the past six years on this show. Uh, get us out of here. Yeah. All right. Coming up next, we investigate why people are so afraid of Strider and why no one wants to use his software. Also, uh, League of Legends uh, has some words for the windups. The news are coming up, but don't go anywhere as we start shilling ourselves out for your money. Because yes, you, and you, and you, and okay, maybe not you, nope, but not, no, mm. the other, the, the <laughs> fuck you, one. fuck you, the really fuck good you, one behind you, you're cool, no, fuck you, fuck are you, helping fuck us. You. Get this show out there, putting it in your face, and well, we thank you all very, very much. And as is tradition, well, we like to whore ourselves out a little bit. So, Jordan, get on with the whoring. I mean, we were just talking about voyeurism in the break, <laughs> so it's, it seems like an interesting or a good enough segue. Thank you to the lovely, lovely people to support this nonsense by heading on over to LinuxGameCast.com, clicking that support button, clicking one of the other links on that page, and entering the credit card number into our totally not spyware form that will capture it and use it for nefarious purposes. Instead, you are directly funding our nefarious purposes. Um, through our Amazon affiliate links, through our Newegg affiliate links, Patreon, or uh, not Patreon, uh, Humble affiliate links, which actually uh, raises money for charity, which is a little bit, nice. mm-hmm. just 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 a little bit. Uh, we got we got Bitcoin, we got LibrePay, we got all sorts of interesting and fun avenues for you to give us money. But the best way to do it is to head on over to patreoncom slash Cast, where we are three dollars away from making a shirt with Strider's mm-hmm. face on it. It's terrifying. I will wear that shit every day. If I will buy seven <laughs> Strider shirts and wear a different one every day. They'll even be like in different colors. I love that shit. Uh, you, yeah, you got all sorts of, you get a bunch of cool uh, bonuses for uh, joining the Patreon as well. Like reserve seats when we're doing live streams. I was doing uh, Serious Sam earlier this week. Uh, then was doing a bit of the, uh, the Jackbox. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, so you you can you can get on board for that just by paying to play. You also get cool stuff like access to our show notes, uh, timed uh, timed exclusive access to videos, and a whole mess of other things that we have behind that paywall. Well, you get the pre pre super shows and now with the video. Oh yeah, you, you also get the pre pre super shows. And so if you want to listen to our production it's meeting or uh, Linux Gamecast minus Linux Gamecast, the, this is true. Yeah, you, that, it's that, that, all that the that parts of the live stuff. now, right for your ear organs. We need to thank some beautiful people this week, Jordan. Yeah, we do. We got we got three. We got to thank Krez, Krezy, Krezgy, some someone. They've yes. they've increased their pledge. Um, so thank you very much for that. And uh, Frank's fuckwall gets uh, some additional ticks on that. Uh, if you don't if you don't know what the fuckwall is, uh, Fr- Frank Frank uh, loves to take his clothes off in exchange for PC hardware, and uh, we can integrate that into the show. And sometimes he'll write them down on his little Bristol board. For the world to see, the people who uh, toss hardware in his direction, and we got uh, two people sent us some hardware this week. Natty sent us some HDMI splitters, 
And no. Linuxaru, who bought us some uh, USB holes via the Tanzania reach around. The Tanzania reach around, man. Getting shit done. Why are we doing this mad shit? Because, oh, hang on, I got credit. Look at that. Ooh. We're building Ooh. a monster. We're building an absolute, because fuck you, that's why monster, to do more crazy shit. I know it's a horrible idea, but we're well on our way. Thanks, everyone. Maybe not the Hello Kitty case. We're undecided on that. But we've definitely I, made I, some I, progress. I, I, want the, I want the My Little Pony case. Let's be real. We do have some updates on that business for the hardware. Jordan, we are still debugging Jotunheim, aren't we? Yes, we are. Okay. There, and you know, like production Jitsi's had some issues too. So there's <laughs> so there's something rotten in the state of Denmark. We're gonna be doing some deep network inspection. <laughs> Maybe we'll stream that so that people will get to watch some live debugging. <laughs> It'll be <laughs> interesting. Maybe we'll set that up. Uh, we do have the two encoder set up, so that. This was the big thing we needed to test before we could set up the Pedro and Jordan units. Well, Pedro, Jordan, and Jill units. The mm -hmm. two nooks. So if this holds nothing genuinely, like physically catches on fire, we'll be making a push at the end of the month for that. So thanks again mm -hmm. to everyone who makes this possible. And uh, no mattress ads. We just get to spend like a few minutes each week. Like, hey, thanks. You're awesome. <laughs> we, yeah. we were totally promoting Christian Mingle and J-Date on <laughs> we did that more than once 100 percent. so uh let's have some fun indeed so uh let's say you're new to this linux gaming thing and you'd like to know how you can get your games chances are you already know how to get your games because you already have steam installed but if you don't there's a uh, an article that comes from make use of a uh, questionable source as it may be and they go, it's like, oh, yeah, you can play games on Linux and you can find games on Steam. You can find games on GOG. You can find it on, uh, you can find them on the Hubble store. You can find them on itch on game jolt. You can uh, get them from whichever repo. Uh, there's even some portable games from people who clearly don't know what the fuck Linux is. And well, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those articles, I guess. If you really are new to Linux, this could be... What about terminal something? games for Linux, Pedro? The ones that are dying. <laughs> Rogue, yes. That hack still works. <laughs> listen, listen, man. I, I will fully fully support Rogue and that hack because if you are on if you're on a server and you're bored, yeah. And you're doing maintenance. <laughs> yeah. That's what you're going to be doing while you're waiting for patching. I, I, really, I really like number seven. How do I play browser games? So you don't have to worry about that because if you can't fucking figure that out, you've already starved to death. You're too stupid to eat. <laughs> um, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure at some point you've forgotten to breathe as well. <laughs> but like, but Valve, or not Valve, Ven. Yes, Valve. Ven, Ven, Ven <laughs> equals equals Valve. Same thing. Yeah. Um, you made a very good point in the show notes that most of this can actually be condensed into a single step, which is... It's all Lutris. Good going there, uh, Plage Majordo. Um, <laughs> Plage was Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plage Marais. Seriously, you could condense half of this article into like just fucking install Lutris and be done with it. So that's our advice. Yeah. Um, and not a single mention of Lutris was to be found in the article. It's like, did you really even bother? Because if you're a Windows user and you're coming into Linux sight and scene, yeah, Alutris is going to make installing that game in your library that you really want to play that much easier. Now, to be fair, to be fair, I totally understand the desire to stay as far away from anything related to Strider as possible. <laughs> There's a powerful survival <laughs> instinct mm -hmm. big deep into the human DNA. I understand. Don't 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 get me wrong. But Lutris, it does work. Lutris does work. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so coming up next, a uh, bit of an up apology from the league of legends because everyone spooled up their redrives and they're like but i all only run league of legends in a vm you're like well you might because you're a fucking farmer um but they're like okay maybe maybe we're gonna tap the brakes on that we're gonna roll it back because uh some very vocal people are angry uh virtual machines uh they're like hey man people were using that shit to hack it they recognize that there's a passionate, dedicated base of players that have worked to ensure... Well, whatever. Well, Str Strider. True. Uh -huh. uh, so they're, they're going to allow that back. But for players using Wine, the community is already at work fixing in the compatibilities with the changes. Now, I remember when this first broke, uh, kind of like, 
holy hell went down. I was like, Jesus, fuck you guys. You did this. And I'm like reading through this. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait a fucking minute. Oh, these changes were live in our public beta environment for several months, months. to give developers of third party applications time to adapt. To which I'll say, kind of hard to fault the devs on this, man. Mm. Yep. And they're, and they're they're working with the the wine developers to fix the wine issue, which is good on them for that. At, at least they acknowledge that like people are playing the games online, and that it's it's good to see more companies acknowledge that wine is a thing that exists that they're going to have to contend mm-hmm. with eventually. Well, no, I mean um, it's better than the uh, Diablo of like just straight up banning people. Banning going, people Listen, we didn't yeah. ban you because of wine. Later, yeah, oh, right. right, yeah, we kind of, yeah, yeah, we did that, but it's, it's all cool, right? Right, yeah. But and and here and here's the thing. Like I understand entirely why Riot is doing something that like that because League is a big enough enough game, especially in Asia, to warrant that sort of um, that section of their user base that is dedicated to farming. That is that is a thing that happens, and because their their ability to make money is predicated on the community having a balanced community economy, it's in their interest to stop people from setting up bot farms. And here's the thing. The lead client is online all the time. So they have that data. They know exactly mm-hmm. who's using it for farming and who isn't. So um, that it is entirely valid. They, they've, they've at least come out and acknowledged that, hey, yes, we, we understand this. But, you know, hey, you had six, you had months to figure this out. And I, and again, for projects like wine, wine is a special case where, like, they got to figure out the exact thing to do that doesn't break everything else because wine. Right. Yeah, and it, they could uh, release just that one specific wine version for the game, and maybe I don't know, just include it in a wine flat pack thingy that we talked about last week. Yeah, uh, just include, just make one of those, and you know, put it out there. It's like, hey, there you go. You can install League of Legends on Linux with the wine pack thingy. Hey man, that sounds like it'd be a snap. Uh, base mark, it's a new that. thing. It's a new hotness. <laughs> it is, uh, and it's a, a new benchmarking engine type of thing uh, that Base Mark put out on Linux. It works, uh, sort of, kind of. Uh, then we'll get into that some more. Uh, on my end, since I'm running Solus, uh, what I had to do was download the dev because they only offer the dev download. I extracted it, extracted the data file, and just ran it, and it worked. Now, if you are running Ubuntu, then you have some uh, stuff <laughs> issues. I, Listen, uh, if you're intentionally running Ubuntu and it's not <laughs> to have an LTS with multimedia capabilities that you can kind of work with, you do get issues. I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, this thing straight up refuses to fucking work on a Tito 4 LTS. Uh, I tried to, you know, depackage I after the software installer. I gave that a shot and it's like, I don't know what happened. And I was like, really? Software installer? I was like, I don't know, guy. Whatever. <laughs> so after doing the depackage I, I was like, oh, wait a minute. It's looking for an, its dependency with curl 3. Curl 4 is the current version. Uh, I extracted the dab, launched it directly. It, it popped up a menu. That was about as far as I got, bro. I did send yeah. them. I want to give them credit, man. And I sent them the email. And they're like, oh, because here's what I said. I was like, yo, why isn't this thing built against uh, curl? It's open SSL with curl uh, version four. That's what currently ships the LTS with a Ubuntu and modern operating systems. And they wrote back. It's like, oh, shit. Uh, we'll get that fixed. So, Pedro, you're going to be upgrading curl if you want to run this in the future. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I yeah, guess. I- I ran this on Fedora 28. I had to, I had to just send the, same, yeah, the same thing that Pedro did. Deb files are basically in our archive with containing two tarballs, which you just extract the data. Um, I didn't even put it in opt. I just threw it on my desktop, ran it. Yep. And it did a thing. And I had to, well, I ran the benchmark and I actually did have to check uh, the GPU utilization in the NVIDIA panel. It's like, yes, it is using 100% of the GPU. Uh, so it does, in fact, work on Fedora 28 uh, with minimal massaging beyond like the generic. Now, both extraction. of you experienced uh, something that I found a bit questionable with this <laughs> is on both of a 1080 and a 1080 Ti, your OpenGL performance marked higher than your Vulkan performance. Oh, yes. Yeah. Not for, for me, not by much. For Pedro, it was a little more significant. 
Mm-hmm. It is, yeah. It was like a full two thousand points or something. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, it's it's a new benchmark, so the points are completely irrelevant at this point. It's, it's, until we it's, have it's some whose line is it anyways? Everything's made up in the yeah. points. Don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and then Colin Mockery like kicks down your door and starts improving <laughs> at you. Oh. But yeah, no, it works. You launch it. Uh, the default thing is just an off-screen render, so you only get to see like the rendered frames uh, in a little mosaic window that's it that's all you can see unless you go into the experience mode or whatever they call it then you can see like the full screen thing but it doesn't give you the result so no because it, it's, it's it's supposed to be like for a kiosk or whatever yeah so I, I i i guess it's it's plan is like oh well we're, we're gonna remove all the overhead from like rendering this in a window by yeah. just rendering <laughs> directly on the gpu it makes a little bit of sense. Uh, we'll we'll probably see some uh, revisions to this as time mm-hmm. goes on. But oh. a com so a com a common complaint that we 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 get on the show a lot is the athlete's lot foot. I was gonna say tennis elbow. Okay, uh, I used to have that. Or 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 or, so, or or hepatitis. <laughs> uh, yeah, a common complaint is that you know lots of lots of games have couch multiplayer, and we don't live anywhere near one another. So mm-hmm. how do we how 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 we am play multiplayer? Well, we sure and as these guys fuck are not going to be doing it with Parsec, ladies and gentlemen, because I tried this and I was like, oh, this is neat. I'm going to click the download button. Lo and fuck, mothering, behold, man. Yeah, this is the promise. Forget what you know about screen sharing, net play, difficulty. We can just hook this up, connect to each other, and play online and do all this business. They have a deb installer for the Kombuntus downloaded it and i was like oh this is gonna be great guys we're finally gonna play all those games that you know should have had multiplayer but didn't and yeah no 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 you're not because you download this doesn't really say anywhere on this main fucking page or on the download page but you download it set up create an account it launched and i was like okay and it's like okay on the web zone it's like okay you verified now click the thing in the client to host your own game. It's like, Brad, I don't see that fucking button. Then I finally <laughs> dig around in their fact. Oh, uh, y- you can o- only host games from Windows 10, LOL, JK. Uh, so, yeah, fuck this noise. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like, the the main thing it seems is, like, it's sort of a, a cross between like a, a VPN service and a screen sharing service. Mm-hmm. Uh, you run the game, you run the server on your machine or on their server, and then you and your buds connect to them. And that's how they get around. Um, essentially, everyone, everyone has a seat at like the local player table. Yeah. But and this, this, this runs into the same problem that all game streaming solutions do insofar as you need really good Internet. And it seems like the people who, you know, run ISPs really don't want stuff like this to exist. So <laughs> yeah. and and adjust their service accordingly. So, yeah, uh, back in the day, there used to be a thing called Hamachi. I guess it still exists, but, and but probably it's just, still- it's just a VPN client. It's, yeah, uh, it's a VPN client dedicated specifically for gaming. It's uh, you could start a game, and it would automatically detect. Okay, you're running this game, so whoever joins your VPN will automatically be in the same LAN for that specific game, and that was a really good idea it made it really simple for people to join a local only multiplayer game without you know it being locally you could be (laughs) anywhere in the world so it's why isn't this working on linux why Uh, up next because (laughs) yes okay (laughs) the all right so i've actually talked about this a couple times um though i don't think we've ever oh no we we talked about it Eons ago, when it was, I think it was like my second appearance on Linux Gamecast Weekly, uh, we, were t- we were talking about playing tabletop games on the internet. This is um, this is a Java-based open source board game engine. It has a bunch of modules that support games like Risk, Monopoly, House on the Hill, uh, Carcassonne, Settlers of Catan, Shatlers of Catan, etc., etc. And yeah, if you if you want to play some board games online with some friends, this gives you a tool to do that. Um, I mean, and they, they get around it by basically saying like, we'll, g- we'll give you the cards and whatnot, but you still need to have the rules of the game. You still need to own a copy of like, uh, I don't know, Jenga or whatever 
to to play the game because other otherwise they're going to get in shit for now i have two very pressing questions one does online jenga exist two fucking how (laughs) vr 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 (laughs) jenga man all right i'll buy that skeletal Uh, skeletal yeah so uh, so it's it's a thing they have um dick yeah i don't i don't think they have any release because the 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 engine itself is pretty stable um the latest version is uh three two one seven so this is java yeah. you can do yep. it it's a thing it looks like it's about as user-friendly as a coiled rattlesnake um but it, it works reasonably well i've used it before all right right on uh what yeah. do we get up next we got we got double 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 diablo uh so uh we, we got we got hit with uh, two diablo related updates this week so i just had to condense, condense them into one story first off free diablo um it is the open source re-implementation a la open mortar wind of the diablo one game they have a status update apparently uh the communication lines have been pretty quiet for a while but that is mainly because this boy has been trying to get online multiplayer re- working for not dot four which currently it is take note super tux cart uh there's still a couple issues he's still uh, soliciting feedback um and uh for what's what's coming down the pipe soon is they're gonna stop using uh the sdl renderer and start using OpenGL directly to allow enable some more fancy graphical stuff. I don't know how wise that actually is, but I guess whatever. It's his project. He can do whatever he wants. I would say SDL allows you maximum portability, so graphical fidelity is worth the hit, in my opinion. But it's, uh, it's like I said, it's his project. Um, yeah, there. Um, of course, <laughs> this is the the engine implementation diaspora continues they're in the process of moving to GitLab because they don't want microsoft to nom their eat their lunch and the other thing uh the other thing related to this is devolution and this has a bit of an interesting story because apparently um developers take note if you're going to give other companies your source code to port their game make sure they actually follow the rules you set because it turns out in the playstation one copy uh, version of diablo there is a full copy of the source code on the disc. Mm-hmm. So uh, this guy has been reverse engineering it to make the game work with a modern operating system. Very similar goal to Freablo. Uh, Freablo is done from scratch, though. This is actually done from uh, the original one. There's no Linux support on Devolution just yet, but uh, they're looking for they're looking to um, make it a more cross-platform enabled thing. Both require the original game files. Um, and I'm pretty sure that there are bits and pieces from each of these that they that each project can strider from one another. So <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty sure we're going to see some interesting updates coming out of both these projects in due time. Yeah. No. Uh, both of them have some basic gameplay, although uh, with Devolution you can only play it on Windows. But uh, it's uh, Devolution is just the straight up decompile slash reverse engineer. Uh, while Friablo is trying to be a complete, from the ground up, as Jordan said, re-implementation. And it's, it's really great to see. And Diablo was one of those games. I much prefer Diablo 2 to the original Diablo, to be mm-hmm. honest. But it's one of those games that it established a genre. So... Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I still feel like Torchlight, and Tor- or Torchlight 2 specifically, is the superior game. Like, well, they a, were created by the same people. No, it, it, exactly. It, it is <laughs> after after freaking fifteen years of like working on Diablo. These guys said no. They they refi- they've refined the concept enough and refined the gameplay yeah. enough to say like this is it. It's full. It's oh, yeah, mod supported. It's it, yeah. Tor- the, Torchlight it, Two yeah. is the king when it comes to that particular kind slow, of ARPG. Slow, slower than slower yes. and firmer. Mm-hmm. That's way too hard. <laughs> This is what I get for not having the two shots set up. So you might know that Atari is an ancient Japanese word that means no functioning prototype. Um, Uh, I I thought that was smach. No, man. Uh, (laughs) No, smach's uh, direct direct translation to Gurja is bullshit. Um, (laughs) This is Atari, man. I just wanted to throw this in because I like to remind everyone. What's this? This is from the register again. All this business in the show notes. Accuses El Reg, the good old-fashioned register, which I don't mind reading because they have a sense of humor. They try to make shit mildly entertaining, kind of like we do, and some people hate them for it. Mm-hmm. Um, so they sit down at GDC. They talk to uh, some of the 
what, what the VCS, that's what it's called. I keep forgetting that. And the version control system. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, they talked about it and they're like, yo, uh, ask some basic questions and dude really didn't have some good answers to just some basic shit. <laughs> then he turned around, went on the Facebooks. Uh, this is, uh, was it the vice president of marketing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Went out on Facebook and he was like, yo, uh, yeah, the people from the register, because the register previously wrote an article like WTF, mate, I, we're not feeling it with this. This is like a little sketchy. So the marketing guy comes on Facebook and he's like, hey, man, what they were writing is inaccurate and they're just trolling. The register went, oh, wait a hot second. Hey, here's the audio from the <laughs> interview. Let's put that online. Uh, All of it. It's, it's broken up into sections too. That was just it, it's gorgeous, and I love it. Love it when somebody delivers such a glorious, glorious bag of dicks. Um, this I, really the only reason I brought this up because listen, the company that bought the Atari name. I, my first thought was like, wait, wait, wait a minute, who's genuinely surprised? I mean, I. I know some people are still white knighting this, but this company's previous product was a fucking Bluetooth hat. All right. Yeah. <laughs> just, just wrap your minds around that gentlemen. So consider does, this. Does it just, integrate with the VCS though? That's what I want to know. Spoon. You know, there's like, we haven't finalized the hardware and what they were showing at uh, the developers conference, a fucking hollow box, man, nothing in it. Mm -hmm. uh, so PSA for not backing hardware projects, on Indiegogo because that's where projects go when they don't have functioning prototypes. Just say it, or at least keep that in mind, please. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the, the dude almost basically admitted that they didn't have a working prototype of any sort. All that it, they had was theory. So yeah, no, just don't. No, no, here, no. Again, here, here, here's, here's the question of the day, ladies and gentlemen is what's going to come out first the smock or this Ooh. oh this is, this is going to come out of early access before that i, I got more faith in that the, they will actually poop out something from the smash <laughs> zed <laughs> i mean it might be horrible and it might look at you with one eye twitching screaming please kill me now but it'll come out before this shit does i'm uh, taking i'm taking bets man i'm all right I'm, <laughs> there's, there's some there's okay some good so when saying the smock i'm mm -hmm. going to say the atari all right <laughs> Uh, all right, check back, check back near the inevitable heat death of the universe to see who won. <laughs> Coming up next, we discuss the miracle of birth and how is Babby formed. Mm. North Ranger, I love Princess Leia. Uh, so I promised to tell you before the break how is Babby formed. And you'll find out by the end of this chair acquisition. We're throwing chairs at Odium to the core. It's developed by Dark Dash One on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about two, three bucks, depending on where you're at. What is it? Odium to the core is a challenging single button music based game with a dark monochromatic art style. It's not monochromatic. There are many, many colors. As you're seeing right now, maybe you don't understand what monochrome looks or means. Guide Odium, the floating character, through dangerous and intense music fueled levels to eliminate the spreading corruption. Reach the core and save Zavald. Uh, the devs did send us some keys for this, so we're going to subject them to the new and improved revised chairquisition. Oh my god, it's all fire! Look at that Ubuntu logo, it's burning! The Dora logo is slightly less singed. This is where we take a game, we run through it, we do some uh, we do, do some basic analysis. Things like, does it launch? How well does it perform? Um, are there any graphical bugs? And how we control it? And we give it a score based on the technical aspects. And then we give it the fun score, whether which is, did we like it? Did we think it's pretty? What do we think? But it's sort of a catch-all for the sort of more ephemeral details of gameplay, of uh, the more opinion-based stuff. So let us kick this off um, for the first share to the launch. Hey, man. Ubuntu? No, let's just run this straight down. Uh, All right. Yeah. Piece by piece. Over here on Kumbuntu, I am running the 1700 with a 980. 1804 LTS. It launched out of the box. No issues. Played it in all the resolutions, but there is a slight issue there. Now, it does run at 60. Easy. 
at 1080 and 2160. No problems, but where it does run into a problem and loses a chair out of the four possible ones is it fails to remember my screen resolution, which can be a ginormous. Fortunately, I can tap the back button and go from 640 by 480 every single time I launch the game, even after I save it and go back to 3840 by 2160. That is a pain in my left pinky toe. Uh, controls, no issues. Worked out of the box. Steam the control. Just make sure you have the overlay on. So, for its health report, it gets three chairs. Hong Kong Ubuntu, 1804 LTS. How's it working over there in Milady Land? Yeah, on uh, Fedora 2864-bit, I'm running the i7-6700K with the GTX 1080 Ti. Yep, everything launched out of the box. Um, after I took off uh, VSync, I was getting several thousand FPS on <laughs> the uh, on uh, 1080 and about 260 FPS on the UHD, which is what I played the rest of the game with. As I had no problem with it remembering my resolution, so that is a thing. Um, control wise, you click a button, you hit the mouse button. If you can do that, you should be in the clear. Yeah. So on Fedora 28. Uh, I'm going to give it a big old four chairs. No real issues. What about Solus with the fire yeah, of evil burning in your heart? Solus, it uh, works pretty well. It launches just fine. Uh, it has absolutely no issues remembering my screen resolution either. Uh, and I've been the one who's had the most issues with that lately. Uh, on uh on the performance metric, it held 60 with VSync on. I didn't feel the need to turn it off, to be honest. Uh, be it at full screen, 3840 by 2160 or 1080p. Just, it is pretty good. Uh, everything showed, everything sound. It's uh, pretty good. And the controls, yeah, like Jordan said, you tap one button. So it it would be pretty hard to fuck that one up. But I guess you would need to be at a special kind of sauce for that to happen. So as far as Solus is concerned, it gets four chairs. All, All right. right. So Fun we- segment. Hey, yep. man, that's four in Fedora, four in Solus, and three on Ubuntu. Mainly because I, 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 I genuinely had to dig at a chair if I got to reset my resolution every single fucking time I play the game. Oh, I, 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 I so very much like it when the, the, the sort of stock <laughs> distribution that this is all supposed to be standardized on just doesn't work. Yeah. It, it, it tickles me in my nether regions. All right. So next, next section is the fun, the catch-all so I'll hand it off to Ven to tell us why this game is the best thing. You know, since, uh, uh, out of us three, I, I think I enjoyed it the most. Listen, man, this is fucking Flappy Bird. Don't lie to people. Uh, I never played Flappy Bird. I did spend some time with Flappy Goat and Goat Simulator, believe it or not. Probably too much time, more than I'd like to admit. Mechanics-wise, this is more of the same. You got one button, as Jordan pointed out. It What it does, man, it pushes your inky, gelatinous ass up in the air. Gravity takes care of the rest. And uh, really, the only other part of playing the game is trying not to fuse whatever controller you're using to your wall through (laughs) momentum. Uh, It's hard, man. I mean, it's borderline fuck you because that's why hard slash malicious. And you know what? I actually can kind of respect that. You know, sometimes I like getting a little angry because you know what? It's been said anger gets shit done. Well, for me, 30 minutes, because that's where I flap the hell out. I get a little too angry at this. It's like, let's not break anything. Glass desk. Not joking. <laughs> I might do this, you know, just revisit this next time I need some high blood pressure, because Odium to the Core absolutely delivers that kind of in spades. It is one of those games that it, it gives you something tangible, something beatable, something you know you can fucking master if you just get your shite together. It's one of those titles. And... I dig the art style. You're looking at it right there. It's monochromatic. It's got some colors. It's well done. It's not lazy at all. And it's something you can pick up, put down, preferably not throw controllers into your walls and or TVs. And it's three wet stinky caches. So you know what? No, sir. I don't completely hate this. I'm going to give this out of the four possible chairs. I'll give it a two, which is a solid. Nah, not bad. Yeah. I have... An irrational distaste for these sorts of games. <laughs> Having been stuck in many, many a doctor's office uh, with a cell phone and the helicopter version of this game, the tap, tappy copter. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. And it, it, these, these, this, this sort of game just doesn't do anything for me. That said, I recognize that there was a fuck ton of effort put into this game. Mm-hmm. The level design is labyrinthine 
and there's lots of secrets and lots of stuff for you to do and it's challenging and um like the the the, the music the music is well done when you're not hearing the same section over and over again when you keep dying in that one spot um the 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 gameplay syncs with the music relatively well which is kind of hard to do uh especially especially in faster paced games such as these but i think it works without so much devolving into a rhythm game a la thumper mm -hmm. but it, it's it's very clear people actually put forward an effort to make this the best product they could given the limitations unfortunately it just doesn't do anything for me i i'm not one of these people where angry gets shit done i'm one of those people who will throw their controller oh, sorry, into sweetheart the wall angry and gets shit done just not in a productive way on your end <laughs> no, if if I if I want angry angry gets shit done if I want to remodel my house because <laughs> I'll be digging things out of walls and putting holes in other walls, um and stabbing myself in the leg, which is not fun, at least when uh, when I'm not paying someone anyways. But uh, <laughs> that said, um I'm I'm just gonna give it one chair just because like 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 I said I recognize that there's a fuck ton of effort put in this game. But I cannot enjoy. I'm just incapable of enjoying these games. I, I gave this one a shot. I gave it half an hour. Here, here's the thing: that when when there is an achievement in this game that like you've made it through an hour of our bullshit, to me that is not a good sign. But you know, your <laughs> mileage may vary, Pedro. Yeah, no, my my, my mileage doesn't vary at all. That uh, no. Uh, so I hate Flappy Bird. I do. It's um. It's the epitome of the cell phone type of game. You hit the button on the screen when you want th something to go higher, and you just let gravity take care of the rest when you want to go lower. It's I don't I don't like it. Uh, it's not completely irrational that hatred I have for this particular genre. It's you're going in blind uh, until you've replayed the level over and over that you learn the thing. It's uh, whatever you make progress, it just throws the same repetitive bullshit at you. And that's really all it can do. And all you can do on your end is tap a finger on a screen and just be done with it. This, on the other hand, showed up on my uh, desktop PC. And all I could do was hit a click on the mouse. And that was all I could do. It's... To be fair, it improves on Flappy Bird quite a lot. Uh, the levels it are all finely crafted. Yeah, it's, it, 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 it explodes. It really does a, a good job of uh, improving on the Flappy Bird concept. It does. Uh, the, the speed that your character goes along based on the background music, that's very good. Uh, the play with color and figuring out what is in the foreground and what is in the background, that's also very good. It's possibly the best example of a helicopter game style Flappy Bird that, you know, Flappy Bird was based on. And all I can think about is that it cements my total, complete, and utter meh. Motherfucker, I'm getting stressed out just watching genre. you play. Um, yeah, no, I am terrible at it. I make no excuses. It's... I don't like it. One chair. So I got to ask, did anyone ever figure out what the little, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing the red line at the bottom is how far yeah, in the level you were at. Yes. Yeah. Your, your progress in the little spikes are the check. I never paid that much attention. Just like, make sure you use your headphones. I'm like, for fucking what? Nothing against the game audio itself. I didn't have a problem with it. I didn't find it offensive, but I was like, why Do, am I supposed the, to be the, doing something to time? The there, there, there are, there are clues about the level in the audio like mm -hmm. you can you the little spikes uh in the uh, progress bar at the bottom are where you died mm. oh are they oh okay. yeah all right uh t-i-l all right well yeah. that so fun wise i guess ven you're giving it two i'm giving it one pedro's giving it one so from that, make of it what you will. It's three bucks if you want to do the deep dive. Into it's three Flappy bucks Sperm. for a fuck around game. I, I say pick it up. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, if 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 you if don't, you like, if you're like me and Pedro, and you don't like <laughs> Flappy Bird games, then you know, don't go, yeah. go, go buy like half a sandwich at a Subway or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, this whatever. is a uh, Flappy Chicken, Flappy Bird, Tappy Chicken, whatever you want to call it, type game. It's not going to change your mind about the genre, but if you like those games, this is a very good one. Yeah, I, I'd but, almost agree with you, Pedro. Like, this is probably the best that we're going to see out of this genre. Yep. 
<laughs> this is um, about as far as you can push it. And listen, this, you know, Flappy Bird was that shit between, you know, Mario pipes. Uh, this, is, this is next level anger this can bring you. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. Mario Absolutely. was the OG Flappy Bird. <laughs> the, water, the, the water levels. Yeah. Okay. F- f- fuck those cheap cheeps. All right. Coming up next, we discuss how to install Skyrim with this compact disc. The trick is you got to open your mouth real wide. In your butt. The sunlight coming in through my window tells you that yes, it's time for the hate mail. It's Make about it time pass. we put yeah, it's about time we put a bow on this particular show. You're so melting, Pedro. You, no, the the blinds are closed. That's fine. That's just the camera being overly sensitive. It's uh no, if you'd like to get in touch with us, go on over to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, make sure to fill out the form and pick LGC Weekly for the little drop down choosy thing. If you want to send us some keys, there's a uh, specific section for that. If you want to ask for relationship advice, you can ask for that too. Jordan will be happy to help you. Though if you are uh, wanting to send us keys for your game, make sure to include at least three or a build that we can share amongst the three of us. Sound good? All right. So... What do we have up this week from uh, from Costa? And they say, so I got a really good deal on the DVD version of Skyrim Legendary Edition from Amazon recently. I know there are a lot of helper scripts from the likes of Play on Linux and Lutris, but no, these all seem to work with the Steam version of the game. Any tips to ensure a smooth installation on from DVD on Zubuntu 1804? Yes, I know it's a Windows game. And no, I don't care. I'm a heretic because frankly, it's that good. So, Ven, you made a video on this topic, actually, years ago. <laughs> yes. Like almost, like, maybe six years ago? Um, yeah. Uh, listen, nowadays, you can basically run Skyrim and vanilla wine. The regular Skyrim, not the legendary edition. That's the X11. Here's the thing, though, Brad. The first thing we were talking about this in the middle part of the show. If you're a patron, go mm-hmm. check that out. Uh, it's in your audio RSS feed or just download it from the post. Uh, the first thing they did, cause I, I too, this, you imagine this is five, six years ago. It's like, maybe I can get this up and running. I bought the DVD version and it's like, okay. Got it to launch in steam with wine. First thing it did. The first update, the first patch was to permanently tie it to Steam, where you could not launch it without Steam. And the reason I bought the DVD version is because I didn't want the added layer of Steam fuckery Mm -hmm. and just run the game. So, yeah, download Lutris. There should be an install script for it. Or even play on Linux. There should be an install. You're you're going to... If you're going to (laughs) legally play it... Right, if you're not going to sail the high seas, man... That, that's the only way to do it is through Steam. Str- yeah, uh, it, Str- Strider, Strider mentions in uh, Shot Realm uh, or in Discord, anyways, that Lucius does have a DVD installer that just came out with the latest version. So you can don't trust that. the French. <laughs> don't, don't, it's, well, yeah. well, well, it, it, it's it's like everyone's favorite uh, Alzheimer patient says: trust but verify. Also, I the, th- the thing with the Skyrim Legendary Edition is even the DVD version is tied to Steam. So you're going to have to be running Wine Steam unless you it's, it's, use yeah, that it's, Steam it's, it's, it's forward a DVD with a Steam installer and the game data. Basically, yeah, it's uh, unless you're using Steam Forwarder that we talked about earlier in the show. You're, yeah, it's that's all you're gonna get. I'm a little sad that we don't have any more hate mail. We got like two, three uh, entries like per the last couple of weeks. Hey, man. Yeah. It's, 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 calls, it's, it calls us a little lonely. Feast or famine, baby. Feast or famine. <laughs> but if you send them, we're going to check them out. And if they're halfway mm-hmm. decent, we're at least going to put them on the screen. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's been beautiful. It's been real. Uh, we're going to roll some credits because, wait. We had to have learned something this week, Pedro. Seriously, after <laughs> motherfucker, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> I, I learned we, that we, the we sun comes voyeurism. up at five o'clock in the morning, and voyeurism might technically not be voyeurism if you're doing it in such a way as not to go to jail. If it's mm-hmm. if it's the person who's deliberately exhibiting themselves, Fuck it, it's I'm just not voyeurism. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's exhibitionism, but whatever. 
Uh, <laughs> almost six years of this. <laughs> we learned nothing. You a bunch of creepy voyeurs <laughs> watching us. <laughs> We didn't consent to any of this. Well, wait, we did because we posted it on YouTube. But shut up! <laughs> it's on YouTube. It's public. Yeah, it, that's yeah. beside the point. <laughs> I didn't. Ex- we didn't expect anyone to actually watch it. <laughs> We're implying that people actually watch this. <laughs> well, there's like a hundred people or two hundred people on YouTube that watch this. Listen, listen the the. the, the. The, the, the dirty secret is that all the Patreons giving us money are just us with like different credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> We're giving ourselves two hundred and fifty-seven dollars. <laughs> yeah, rolling it's in a man. L- less because Patreon's taking a cut. Project and, you know. bitching gold Lamborghini is well underway. Kinda. There have been worse we, uh, money laundering schemes, I guess. We we're going to buy a lug nut. <laughs> Jordan, that's the thing that goes on tires. I know what a lug nut is. <laughs> I don't know, man. Sometimes I worked in, Dude, I worked in a garage. That, still, I mean, so, some of your lacks of car knowledge has been staggering to me. Mm. That's no moon. Dying to fire, ladies and gentlemen. We love you. Bye. Five dudes.